Hello and welcome to the Perpetual Traffic Podcast. This is your host, Ralph Burns, and this is episode 269. And I am joined here by my awesome co-host, Amanda Powell. How are you? Oh, doing well, as always. How are you, Ralph? <laughs> very, very good. Happy Friday. We're recording here on a Friday, which normally we don't do, but I don't know. We got like this bouncy energy here today, yeah. which is really cool. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> be just because it's Friday, but it's because we've got an awesome guest here. And his name is Manuel Suarez. He's the CEO of Attention Grabbing Media, which is a marketing agency that helps businesses provide value for their customers, establishing a strategy to reach their ideal customers. What that all means is we're going to be talking about how they actually do it with a seven step process that allows you to penetrate social media in highly competitive markets. It's actually not as competitive as you all think it is, but some people tend to think that it is. And uh, really excited to get into these steps here with Manuel. So Manuel, welcome to Perpetual Traffic, man. Ralph, Amanda, it is an absolute pleasure for me to be here with you guys. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's great. We were actually talking before we hit record today. We sort of know each other kind of virtually through conferences, and that's kind of the way that it is in this industry. That's right. And it's, it's sort of funny because we were talking about this with, uh, we had an, uh, an agency customer call right prior to this. We were all talking about, like, well, all these things like Zoom and doing things virtually, you have a, a part, part of your team now is virtual. Yeah. Some are in a physical office. Like all of this is sort of second hat to us in this tiny little digital marketing world. But outside <laughs> of it, we're like le the leading edge, like the bleeding edge. And people really <laughs> want to understand like all the stuff that you do, not only on digital, but how to run a, a, a virtual business and sort of, you know, yes. work things like Zoom, which we always seem to sort of have a problem with um, every time we record. But <laughs> Don't know how um, it happens. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it's kind of cool that you know, we've, we've been able to sort of create this, this industry, this digital marketing industry, which is now going a little bit mainstream here. So mm -hmm. the things that we're going to be talking about aren't necessarily just for the perpetual traffic crowd specifically, but it's for anybody who wants to penetrate the social meteors, as Frank Kern always used to say uh, <laughs> when he was our longtime customer. But uh, so tell us about like what you guys do at uh, Attention Grabbing Media, which is a great name, by the way. And I know you sort of started similarly to how I did just as a consultant, a small team. Now you've got, you know, over 50 people and growing and obviously really doing some great work for your customers. Yeah. Thanks, Ralph. Um, question. Are you hundred percent virtual for tier 11? We are, yeah. You are, right? Always I started like that. Yeah. Uh, in all honesty, um, you know, I have 68 staff as of today, as of this recording and always looking for more and adding more staff because it's like you were saying on the intro, right now, this is such a hot commodity, uh, digital marketing and mm. understanding these platforms. And I'm seeing all these companies trying to pivot and shift over their energy towards this new world. And we have been positioned in this world for quite a while, Ralph, you longer than me. And um, I guess we got lucky, right? There's a, there's a quote from uh, Seneca that I use a lot on seminars and webinars that he says, what, is, what does it mean to get lucky? It's in preparation meets opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way, we have gotten really lucky because I know, I know I can tell you that I have people every single day trying to figure out themselves how can they take a part in this world. Even though people like you, uh, people like Amanda, digital marketer, like all of us have been preaching for so long mm -hmm. about, hey, jump on the social media opportunity. Hey, there's an <laughs> opportunity. It's a wave. Why don't you write it? It's going to pass you by. Don't be one of those guys that are saying, I wish I would have jumped on the YouTube wave. You know, don't, don't be one of those guys. Right? So I've been talking about this for a long time. And right now, COVID-19 has presented an acceleration that we knew was going to happen. In 10 years on the line, maybe, we were going to be online first, eventually online only. This just has been massively accelerated. So in our world, our commodity, which is, which is digital marketing knowledge, intellectual property has become that much more valuable. But I started my agency, and we'll get into a little bit of my story, but uh, I, it was all me. Uh, and then I had two partners, and then we started building um, all of it. Uh, with remote workers. Uh, so it was all 100% virtual, except my partners that were with me. 
Um, and I started building a team afterwards. So I have 68, I have 21 local. And the reason why I started building a team, uh, it's, I, I guess it's twofold. Uh, one, I have a business called Natural Slim, uh, which mm-hmm. my agency is obviously, this is the biggest client for my agency. And it has mm-hmm. been for years. I happen to own Natural Slim. I own AGM. So I have the best of both worlds. It's mm-hmm. fun to do it like that. Uh, so we have Natural Slim has a building. So we have taken over and shared the building with them. Uh, I call it taking over because we eventually added more staff than them here locally in the office over here. So, and also because I, I really enjoy, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very social person, uh, Ralph, and uh, I enjoy just hanging out with my guys and my team. Mm-hmm. And, and mm. it's fun. And I enjoy the energy and the activity. And, but I can tell you that we, we actually had covid uh, come into our building and we had to close for several weeks and mm-hmm. we expanded. We had our highs every month being closed. Uh, mm-hmm. The month of, uh, of, I believe it was June, we closed for two and a half weeks and we broke our income records that month. That month. So I'm not keeping a lo- local office because it's better. I think it's something that I just enjoy building that culture locally, but we can build 100% and we'll be just fine. And that's the opportunity that we have today. And that's what we have at AGM Marketing. So we service all kinds of businesses. We talked about that um, at the beginning when, you, when, when we were chatting. I, I service uh, e-commerce brands and um, uh, people that need leads and softwares and services and um, personal brands and digital products, et cetera. And that's what I do every day. But it wasn't always like that. Uh, maybe like you, Ralph, I don't have a marketing certificate hanging on the wall. Um, I created my own, my own path with training and studying and implementation along the way. That's for sure. Well, I mean, experience and actually doing it is the best education yeah. you can get for That's sure. So true. <laughs> and I actually thought about this the other day. I actually did go to school for marketing. I can't did believe it. Did you really? Uh, did, I feel like- Did you graduate? I, I did actually graduate. Oh, barely, so you have to do it on the wall. <laughs> no, well, I don't even know where it is. It's in a drawer somewhere. But that doesn't, I didn't learn anything there. I mean, plus, I don't know how many years. And that was a few years back. Um, so it wasn't really relevant. But everything that, you know, we've learned is, is well, a lot of it came through like Ryan Dice originally. <laughs> sort of a strange sort of thing. The first digital product I ever bought. But it was all learned by stuff that we paid for, like that was the education. And then mm-hmm. the doing it and losing thousands of dollars was even further education. I was doing it for myself. It sounds like you started the same way here. And I think that's the only way to do it. And it is funny that this digital marketing, direct response, whatever it happens to be like, you know, for us, our business has never been stronger now coming out of COVID, which I hope it'll last, you know, economics a set aside. But point is, is there all of a sudden there became this even more surge in demand. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, you know, whenever Facebook or Instagram, which is all we do at Tier 11 is in the news more, it's like it drives more interest because people mm-hmm. are saying, geez, that's influencing like a presidential election like it did in 2016. <laughs> so it's more awareness, but also, you know, we had a ton of customers that had you know, their retail or their bricks and mortar business just dry up, but they had this little Shopify store over on the side and they never really did much with it. Now they're like, all right, transition over to that. And that's now, now that their bricks and mortar is coming back, your business is even more powerful. So COVID in a lot of ways has made a lot of businesses that we've dealt with, ours included, even stronger, which is a very Mm -hmm. strange outgrowth, as tragic as this whole thing has been. Sounds like it was in your building. It was in my house. My son got it. You know, thankfully he was okay. But like, you know, what doesn't kill you does make you stronger. And uh, I think COVID is one of those things where that's you know, the truth. If we do come out of it eventually, it'll continue to be sort of a defining moment in our lives for sure. What a year, 2020. Something yeah. else. Unbelievable. <laughs> So, uh, so let's get into these seven steps. And I think this is going to be interesting because I always love to hear someone's take on the, the same general things that we all know, like Amanda knows this stuff, like content marketing. I know advertising and, you know, how to market, but it's always really interesting to hear somebody else's take on it. And Mm -hmm. in your case, it's really interesting because you built an extremely successful company around these seven steps, but also enlisted your dad 
as the social media star. And we were talking pre-record. I'm like, I could never do that with my, I mean, rest <laughs> in peace. My dad passed away a few years ago. But the point is like, this is an amazing story. And now it's a hugely successful business where you're implementing all these seven steps. So kudos to you for being able to do that. And, uh, you know, I might have to get your dad on a professional traffic episode. Yeah, and, and the story is so it. fun. We've, yeah, we've, like Ralph said, we've been talking before the recording and it's just like probably one of my favorite stories in terms of, uh, Grow, growing a business, but also just growing a personality in general. I think it's yeah. fantastic. It's been yeah. a lot of fun with my dad. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that much. I, I, my dad has always had entrepreneurship in his blood. So much <laughs> so, he was he's a businessman. I mean, he's. Uh, we, we don't have enough time to talk about my entire story with you guys today here, but <laughs> We go way back uh, when I was a kid. Um, he had a toy store. Um, you guys already know my last name is Suarez. In mm -hmm. Puerto Rico, we had a company called Suarez Toy House. And back in the day, uh, Suarez Toy House in Puerto Rico, which is a small island with two, two million people in it, was like a big deal. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, ha we have Toys R Us that went bankrupt a couple of years ago, but yeah. Suarez Toy House was the Toys R Us in Puerto Rico and in the Caribbean. And, and he made a lot of money with it. And it was my grandpa's business and they did fantastic with it until Toys R Us came about. It's crazy how this whole thing's like all of it repeats itself throughout history. Right. Because then, then Amazon came around, Amazon <laughs> oh, came and Toys R Us disappears. And mm -hmm. who knows? I, right now, it's not in the foreseeable future. Somebody doing this to Amazon, we'll see what happens in 50 years or so. But this has happened many times and it happened to us. So our family went bankrupt twice. First time when I was 10 years old after being very rich with the Suarez Toy so uh, Company that my dad had, bankrupt, lost everything. My dad went into rebuilding for years. He actually was an alcoholic. So the whole thing kind of like developed and f the whole family went, uh, fell apart. Uh, and the rest of my years from the age of 10 to the age of 20. I lived in poverty. I had nothing. I had to figure it out because my dad and my mom, after 19 years of marriage, went bankrupt, both of them, divorced, separated, and it all fell apart. So then I had to figure out, and at that point, I was a horrible student. Coming from myself, got involved with dark things and drugs and all things that in, in a small island, like the one that I lived in, is very rampant. Mm -hmm. So I was a part of that world for for quite a while until I escaped and I went to a different country because I had to. I kept on going mm -hmm. back to the same problems. Went to Mexico, uh, I went, met my wife and then I, I came back to Florida, to the United States in Florida and I got a job. But then what happened? 2008 happened and then the economy collapsed. And for some strange reason, some bank decided to lend me $250,000 for me to buy a house in 2008 in the middle of like still the bubble, I think it's 2007. Um, before the whole thing collapsed. And I mm -hmm. said, hey, I got no money. I got no credit. I got $40 in my, cash, in my bank account. Can you please lend me some money? Oh, sure, why not? 0% down. I got a, a, a house. And so 2010 hit and I already had, again, nothing, bankruptcy. So my whole process, Ralph and Amanda, starts with uh, necessity. Uh, somewhere in 2011, having lost everything, and now having three children and looking at them and wondering what the heck am I going to do with, I don't have Ralph's marketing certificate, not even in the drawer, right? I don't have <laughs> anything. I had to figure something out and that's where two things happened at the same time. Uh, my dad was struggling uh, with the business in Puerto Rico. Uh, as you guys might have heard, Puerto Rico has been hit by economy, bad governments, uh, hurricanes, uh, earthquakes. I mean, it's been like nonstop for years. Mm -hmm. So the island was like in trouble and my dad was losing his business and I saw him doing a seminar and I said, we got we to gotta start. We got to do this in today's world. And today's world includes, let's do a YouTube channel. Let's get you in front of a camera. And we started creating a channel called Metabolismo TV. And funny story, Ralph uh, and Amanda, something that um, I got to give credit where it's due. Uh, it all started with Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Crush It. And studying, uh, yeah. <laughs> and studying the, uh, the, the Gary Vee's concept of wine library TV, which goes in line with the first step of the formula, which is figuring out the superpower. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we did was that we said, okay, dad, what is your superpower? Let's see, what is your super skill? What are you good at? And if you don't know, let me know because I'll tell you what it is. And he's like, <laughs> well, 
son, he was 62 years old at that point. He's like, I'm getting old. And I'm like, okay, fine. But you have a certain passion. Uh, you talk about all the time. Mm-hmm. In dinner time, we're all tired of hearing out of it. All your, <laughs> your kids were sick and tired of it, dad. Uh, and, but, <laughs> and, and you don't stop talking about it. And I try to get you to get entertained with my children and, and you don't get entertained. You don't care about anything except this subject. So what is your superpower? And he said, okay, well, son, my, my superpower is health and helping people improve their energy and their metabolism. Mm. Perfect. You got it. We're going to go down that, that route. And we put him in front of the camera. And for a good six, nine months, he felt like this old crazy man that nobody was watching, that nobody was paying attention. And we just kept on doing it and kept on doing it, which is Ralph, you and I were talking about your uh, episode number 269, which is this. That takes persistence. You got to be able to put your head down and do it without having mm-hmm. to, you know, how many comments do I got? How many views? How many subscribers? And that is where a lot of people fail at. So this, this, step, uh, this step right here, which is the superpower part, you got to be willing to go through that process. If you really care about it, you got to be willing to put your head down and work because if you don't, everything else will fall apart. If you're looking for income in the next two months and you won't make it unless you generate that income, then, you know, might as well go get a job and go down a a different route because it is a competitive market out there, but anybody can make it if they just go down the route and persist. Some people are going to make it faster because they're better than the other ones. And that's a fact. Some people are natural. My dad kind of like evolved and he became a natural and I think uh, that's 2012 when we created the channel. 2015, after three years of hard work, we celebrated 100,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. 2015, three years later. Fast forward the story, we crossed 3 million subscribers uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, Social media, he's an international powerhouse. This guy has influenced the lives of millions of people. Uh, Our business, which was going broke in Puerto Rico, barely generating $100,000 a month, uh, and dying because they were spending $120,000 a month. Uh, now is going to cross $50 million this year internationally, just $25 million in the United States alone only. And this is all part of that story of like getting my dad to communicate to the world his superpower and his super ability to help others with that information that he would take for granted that we were all tired of, his children, <laughs> but the world out there really, really needed and could use to improve a particular aspect of their lives. I feel like I love, I love this story so much because it's not even, you know, there's a certain marketing aspect to it and definitely, you know, finding your superpower. But I feel like it's just a story about like human resilience it, it, as well, because I, I mean, the amount that of like hardships that your family, like you described your family going through and just resilience and persistence exactly what you just said in terms of like just continuing to push forward and then you know finding your dad's superpower is something that i love so much because it's such a unique uh i think your dad is such a unique personality because never never do you you generally don't see you know health influencers for back of lack of a better term of you know of that age and I think that's what makes it so unique and so fascinating I'm sure why so many people have fallen completely in love with him um because you know you're when you're so persistent and you start getting in front of people which you'll talk about through your throughout your process uh you it becomes you know you're these certain people can become so lovable, um, especially when you're, you know, you're telling a story like you are too. I think it's just so, such a fascinating story. And there's so much that goes in, so much that's gone into the business and so much that's gone into, you know, making it work. And I, I just love that. It, it's, I, I can talk for days about it. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's not a doctor. He's not a nutritionist. He's not supposed to be doing this. I can tell you that, that he, he does have a community of, of um, experts, quote unquote, that mm-hmm. don't believe he should be doing that. And he still has developed this humongous audience that goes to war for him. When anybody, <laughs> anybody comments anything, he is definitely somebody that I admire that much, uh, incredibly, because he, he set his path and he built it along the way. And we joke about that. Um, I went to Gary's office, uh, to Gary V's office in 2017. Uh, mm-hmm. We are actually, uh, one of his episodes called uh, The Daily V's, I think it's episode number 37 called Jersey Boy or something like that. My dad, myself and my wife, we went to Gary's office. We had a meeting one-on-one with him. 
Uh, long story uh, for another day, but one of the things that I, we told Gary joking is like, look, look Gary, and, and D-Rock was there and we said, we copied and pasted. Uh, we plagiarized you in and out. Your channel was called Wine Library TV. Our channel was called Metabolismo TV. And, and, and <laughs> even, even the look and feel of the whole thing. And he was like, I love it. I love the execution, right? So we, 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 started, we got motivated and inspired with that route. But it's incredible. Yes, what, what we've what we gone to where we're at today would not have happened, Amanda, if it wasn't for pure, sheer, um, sheer motivation to survive. Uh, mm -hmm. We, we kind of had to like, it's or else, right? What do we do to have a better quality of life for ourselves. At this point, uh, we do what we do because we're into now helping people. A lot of people say that, you know, they, it's a cliche like, oh, I'm in business because I want to help people. Not really. The, the beginning story of your business creation is generally, I need to improve my quality of life. But then Absolutely. as you transition at, uh, and you have developed your business and you're doing well and you don't really need anything else anymore and you have everything that you could possibly need and want, then it could become more of a passion, which is where people like my dad is at. I'm, I'm getting there. Like I'm into helping people and providing value and less like doing other things. And I think that road is a really clear road for anybody to be able to grow a business if you really have the intention pure at heart that you really want to create a difference with people along the way. That's your superpower. And that's what you got to figure out. So how do people figure it out? And we're sort of into the first, maybe one or two steps here. We've sort of uh, gone into as far as like how much content you guys have created around <laughs> his personality yeah. and his passion. But you obviously looked at him and stated like, I know what your superpower is. Mm -hmm because you were so close and obviously you were the recipient of his lectures at the dinner table, which, <laughs> you know, I've done that myself to my sons. But um, <laughs> the point is, is like you did it, you identified it to him. For the listeners of the show here, how did they identify their own superpower to really get to step one? Because all the other six steps really flow from that. Mm -hmm. What would be your recommendation? Right. What is your message? Uh, how does your business help people? What is the reason that you got into business? What is what you consider to be your ability? Uh, what are things that you consider to be skills? How can you make somebody else better with your products? No matter what that is. Are you an entertainer? That's a superpower. Are you somebody that inspires people? That's also a superpower. Are you an educator? Like I myself, I consider myself, I wish I could consider myself an entertainer, but I try to be funny and it doesn't always work out. So I'm going <laughs> to skip that part. I'm an educator. And, and uh, people like you, Ralph, yourself, you're an educator too. You know how to break down and, for example, find somebody that has an ability to market products or services and ask questions and break it down and also build your organization and your agency and deliver quality products. That is a superpower in itself. And, and, and I think anybody that has a business generally takes it for granted. I mean, even for example, if you go into some, something as boring as accounting, taxes. Well, man, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but when I talk to my accountant, he blows me away. Uh, I have to, he gets me a whole email, right? Like right now we were doing, um, I told you guys a story about, you know, things that we're handling legally. I'm not going to get into with like my dad or like, you know, um, setting up our future, right? And uh, that we're with the CPA and we are with uh, lawyers and we're going over the details and they write me this whole explanation as to <laughs> what could be done um, uh, in regards to the laws, Puerto Rico laws, United States law, um, estate laws and taxes and gifting and, and all that stuff. And they break it down. And after I read it, I don't understand a single word of what I just read. <laughs> and I replied to the email and I said, all right, guys, I'm going to ask you for a favor. Can you please? And I am paying them a lot of money, right? Because these guys, they sit down and they break it all down and they're going to send me yeah. a bill. So right. I say, can you please explain in a few sentences what all of this means? Oops. I think that's, that's <laughs> my, my watch over here. That's Siri. Sorry, yeah. Darren. Siri wants to participate. Uh, <laughs> so... I asked these guys, right, my lawyers, I said, can you guys explain in just a few sentences, as briefly as possible, what it all means? And then they come back and they explain, Manuel, what this all means uh, based on the article such and such and such, and based on this particular section right here, is that 
here you go. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> These guys just saved our business millions of dollars because mm -hmm. they discovered something that I wouldn't have discovered. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And, and that, mm -hmm. that is so incredible that, you know, you miss out on opportunities because you think you know it and you don't. And something like that, which is a boring subject, you can find a real superpower that really helps people. And let's say on that, on that same example, Amanda, like talking about content, uh, on that same example, you put this accountant in the CPA to start teaching people about these things, you're going to get an audience. You're going to okay. want to learn about it. I, I wish that I had, you, uh, you know, uh, Ralph was saying at the beginning, like, it's not really as competitive as you think. It's right. You're mm -hmm. absolutely 100% right. I wish that I had a CPA teaching me about wealth building that can really mm -hmm. give me a breakdown. And whenever this person has a service to offer, I wouldn't even go anywhere else. I would go right. to that person. There's not enough of that. There's not enough of these professionals that are well-educated, that are well-informed, that have knowledge that they take for granted, but we wish we could have. So my recommendation to anybody that's listening is that you got to figure out what is the purpose of you having that business? Uh, why did you get in it to begin with? Uh, do you have an organic garden and you sell organic products because you believe in the nature and you believe that you're going to be able to extend the longevity of somebody's life. Well, that's a huge superpower and you got to talk to people about it and you can either write about it or you can take, um, create a podcast or you can do videos or you can do infographics. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you can do for you to communicate that superpower. And in the long run, if you do things right, if you continue listening to perpetual traffic, if you get educated, <laughs> well, you're going to know what to do with these people that are consuming your content. And that's the number one thing that everybody needs to understand. And it doesn't happen overnight. That's for sure. It never does. And it's interesting because, I mean, this, this podcast, you know, your YouTube channel is all really one and two of the two steps. Like, for example, we just decided, well, we're going we're gonna to do a, a show about traffic on a podcast. That's all we do. We obsessively communicate about it. Mm -hmm. The thing that we're highly passionate about. And you know, I think we're, you know, based upon the listenership, people seem to understand what it is that we're saying and get some good <laughs> results based upon it. But it is kind of just that simple. It started with an idea. You know, we first started this show. It's like, what do we really love to talk about? What do we do that, that we're highly passionate about. And even though there were other Facebook and Instagram ad experts, other you know, traffic experts that were out there, our voice is different than everybody else's. And that actually mm -hmm. cuts through the competition. And your dad, for example, is you know, a guy in his you know, mid to late 60s, maybe 70s, I'm, I'm guessing. Like his approach is different than all the other people that are out there talking about metabolism or diet or health and mm -hmm. wellness and that's your superpower and that also makes the market less competitive as a result because nobody does it the way that you do it right and, and i rinse and repeated the process again it's not like i got lucky one time with this process and oh my god i'm so lucky that that's my father and you know it's not for any skepticals out there which i know you know we could be skeptical sometimes especially of the subject of marketing Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I have, have gotten lucky enough to rinse and repeat this process over and over again. I, 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 Ralph, my agency, which started with me only and now has 68 staff, and I get to have a seat on the table with some people that I only would have dreamed about many years ago, uh, it started with me exactly doing the same road. Uh, I didn't advertise. I don't advertise for leads. I never do. I just get content. I just grab my superpower and I communicate it about obsessively, which is the second point on this particular step, um, which is the seven step sequence here. So I just do it all the time. Like I have another client uh, who's been with me for many years now that I had the pleasure. This guy is incredible. Obviously, we're talking a little bit about unicorns, uh, which are <laughs> like these content creator guys. Uh, and we can talk about more specifics about what to do. Uh, if you're, you, you don't feel confident, which it's crazy, but I just interviewed um, Dr. Eric Berg. I don't know if you guys have heard about this individual. Have you? <clears throat> I, off the top of my head, no. Okay, well, you're, you're, not, you're in the marketing world, maybe not in the health world, but Dr. Eric <laughs> Berg, uh, he's an international super powerhouse in the subject of health, and his mm -hmm. subject is a ketogenic diet. That is his, he's a keto king. Uh, 
Mm. He is, he's the God of keto. Uh, he's Dude, at the top. Sound familiar. <laughs> yeah. He's at the top of the mountain. Um, he has over 4 million subscribers on YouTube. He has mm. uh, a humongous following. Um, one of the biggest Facebook messenger channels. Uh, we're, we're a big advocate of the managed platform. Um, he's, uh, for example, 2019, Dr. Igberg's channel won the messenger channel with the platform, won the most engaging bot in the world. He has an incredible content machine, but I was able to get this individual and get him seen by millions of people. He, he just crossed 1.2 billion views on his social media and YouTube content last year. He has a superpower and he just communicated about it nonstop in a way that people could understand it. And if you figure that out and if you put your head down and you do it, it doesn't have to happen years on the line, but it can happen fast because I still think that there's massive opportunity. And I don't know about you guys, but I think the market agrees because they, you, if you look at what's happening with a company like Facebook, wow, these guys are like blowing up. Uh, <laughs> they're going to be the next trillion dollar company. I don't know if you guys have followed the stock market, but they're, they're going on, a, on an incredible exploding trend that it's like almost like the world is waking up to what this powerhouse company really is about and what it can do for us. Absolutely. I mean, that brings us to step three, which is mm -hmm. you know, you're obsessively communicating about it, but you still have to provide value. You just can't get on there and tell jokes, but unless jokes are what you're doing in your business. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the point is like, maybe you, you're have a comedian. To, maybe you are a comedian. Maybe <laughs> that's the way to do it. You know, I'm like I, I stand corrected. Absolutely. So you provide that amount of value. Like, how do you know if you're providing value, especially early mm. on? I heard this statistic. I think it's probably still the same, Amanda. It's like the average blog, the average podcast lasts anywhere from two to three months because people like they don't want to pay it forward. They don't want to put the work in or they run out of ideas or energy because they're not getting any real positive reinforcement. Like, you know, first couple of months of our show, we didn't really get that many people listening and we just mm -hmm. kept at it and kept at it and kept at it. And it's like, I kept saying to all, you know, the co-hosts at that point, it's like last man standing here. It's like, you just have to keep going and moving forward and be very, very consistent with it. But at the same time, obsessively communicating about what it is that we knew, but providing value at the same time. So, yeah. right. Right. And I feel like that's why, and I'm sure you'll expand on this, but I feel like that's why step one is, I mean, all of your steps make sense as they flow into each other, but that's, you know, why step one is it has to be your superpower because if you're not passionate about it, exactly like you had already said in terms of like your dad wouldn't stop talking about health subjects because he's passionate about it. So he knows he's like a wealth of information. Right. And I feel like that's how you know you're providing value because you're when you're passionate about something, that passion will transfer to other people. And also when you're passionate about something, you know what questions people are asking because you've probably asked them yourself. Um, and, you know, in terms of like being an SEO geek on this side of things, like when someone asks me an SEO question, you can generally answer them because I've nerded out on that subject before because I'm passionate about that particular subject. And I think that's exactly what you're describing with your dad is he's so passionate about health that when he talks about it, that passion comes through, which is why it can't just be something that you're mildly, you're, you know, hopefully it's not something that you're mildly interested in. It's something that you can really get behind because when you get behind, people will start to feel that momentum that you're pushing because, you know, you, other people want to be passionate about something too. And if they're seeing, you know, your passion and your drive and, you know, what you're, you're that you're actually providing something that's extremely valuable because, you know, you've lived and breathed it for however long, that's what's really going to like stand out you know, in the competition or make you stand out. It's what makes you unique, which is why Ralph was saying there's not necessarily like how much competition is there really when you're focused on something that makes you or your business completely different from everyone else, right? A hundred percent. And the other thing about that, Amanda, to complement that point is that we don't really understand our true abilities until we discover them. Uh, it, it's incredible. And, and we mm. go through that, that, yes. you know, I, I remember my first podcast because I have a podcast too. And I, the first one I've been doing, I think for three years, you guys, 
absolutely trump my consistency in a big way. Um, <laughs> but I, I have podcasts too and I provide value in it. But if you go back to my first ever episode and you compare it to the way that I am right now and my delivery, it's gone through massive transformation. So the transformation as a content creator, as an individual providing value is inevitable along the way. So what I like to tell people is like, look, that first year when you're mm-hmm. doing it or the first six months, you got to realize that it's not really for them. It's more for you because you want to get used to your own voice, your own value, your own communication, your own look mm-hmm. and feel and all of it. And, and I can relate to that because I didn't feel that I would be good at you know, for the first time that I ever got on, and actually the first, my first ever live seminar was in January 2017. And the reason why I had a seminar, which was uh, in, L- in Las Vegas, uh, I had an e-commerce friend. Uh, he was actually one of my mentors. Uh, his name is Ben Cummings. He would teach me about Amazon and mm-hmm. learned a lot of things from him. He's a good friend of mine now. He saw my expansion and my results. And because of that, he said, can you come speak? And I said, can, can I? Can I really do that? Mm-hmm. And I did it. And I created this crappy presentation that looked horrible, which <laughs> was right now I can just look at it and put it in a museum, like my first ever webinar or seminar. Whoa. <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. So he put it there. Uh, I got on stage and for a full 10 seconds, it felt like it was 10 minutes. I was wondering what the heck am I doing here? I'm about to get down and I'm looking at all those people listening to me. There's 50 of them there. I don't even know. I don't belong. You get all these feelings of like insecurity. I don't know. So far, it feels like everybody that I know of goes through that. I was interviewing Dr. Berg. I have my own weekly show called The Social Marketing Hour, uh, which I do on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And I was interviewing Dr. Berg as a content machine that he is. And, And he told us his story, even though I worked with him for four years. I never knew this. Content machine, all right, this guy, 3,000 videos, uh, incredible individual, such a content producing machine, which is unheard of in this world at, at the level that he's at. There's very few of them like him. He did public speaking, fear of public speaking training. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was so afraid of uh, the way that he would speak that he would go out and get drunk afterwards to deal with his like... <laughs> Things that you don't even know, right? So it's, it's very normal that any of you guys that are listening to us right now that you're wondering, do I even have this in me? Or is it even possible? Or should I be a personal brand? Or should I just do, well, there, obviously there's other routes. You can, you can be a podcast host. That's such a good opportunity right now. You can be a writer. But mm-hmm. somehow, either you or your team around you, you must create a superpower team of providing value especially in this world right now, which there's opportunities, a lot of them, but there's also a lot of skepticism in regards to brands and products out there. And if people don't see you before, if they have not been in contact with you, I mean, I even, I think on a recent podcast with you guys, uh, Ralph, I, I heard one of your experts or yourself talking about how instead of seven touch points right now, we kind of have to touch them, what, 10, 12, 12 times or... I don't know if it was you guys talking about that, but we have to have multiple touch points with people right now to get mm-hmm. them to trust us. And now more than ever, and this is a roadmap to accomplish that, that when you present an offer, which is the last step, which we will get to, hopefully, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we, when will. You pre- we will. <laughs> when you present an offer to these people, they are more receptive. They can listen to you. They can listen to the mm-hmm. offer because it's not like completely stranger to them. They understand that you've been down the road with them and you communicate and provide a value along the way. And you have to kind of build that along the way more than ever right now, more than 2019, because we have the situation right now, which who knows what, where it's going to end? It's, there's a lot of uncertainty right now in this environment. Yeah, absolutely. I love what you said. The first six months are for you because mm-hmm. <laughs> you really do have to get good at it before and like be yeah. comfortable in how you actually deliver. It does, whether or not that's the whole 10,000 hour rule or whether it is mm-hmm. or not, I'm not really sure. But the point is like that's you know between that two to six months is when people typically give up. But if you can break through that, that's really for you perfecting whatever medium it is, whether it's YouTube, whether it's podcast, whether it's blogging, whether it's, you know, you got to find your voice. And then after that, it's for the audience. So 
speaking of audiences, I think we're at step number <laughs> three, going to step number four. Step number four is build audiences and then we can get into like how we actually kind of monetize that. So uh, let's talk about step four here. Right. Well, this one goes hand in hand with um, the pay to play concept because um, let's say that you have a social media following. Like let's talk about the examples that I just incorporated uh, in my dad's brand. Uh, we have um, a company called Natural Slim. It's an e-commerce brand. Uh, we, we have 50% of our businesses on the internet. 50% of our business is over the phone consultants. We have mm -hmm. 50 consultants in the USA and they're taking orders all day long from the, what we're doing on social media. We, try, we drive traffic to the call center and we drive traafic to our Shopify channel, uh, which mm -hmm. is us.naturalsend.com. Uh, it's all in Spanish. For you guys that want to check it out, we are servicing the Spanish world. So if you don't speak Spanish, I don't recommend that you go in there because you will not understand <laughs> it. There should be a button somewhere to translate it in the website, but we service 99.5% of our audience is Spanish speaking. But what, what we've been building this audience for years now, uh, since 2012, as I told you guys, building this YouTube audience, it's not even, we're not even building natural slim. We're building Metabolismo TV, which is my dad's content. And we don't ever make my dad a salesman. Never, ever. The selling happens behind the scenes uh, on social media, on retargeting, on Google ads, et cetera, all over the place. And then we bring them into our call center and our shops. So we have audiences that have, we have been building for years. Now, let's say that a lot of you guys, which I understand is a lot of us, you're starting in the social media world and maybe you don't have audiences built out yet and you open up your Facebook page yesterday and you know organic reach has plummeted and you know that building a following, it's gonna take you a while um, and it's gonna be close to impossible. Uh, sometimes people tell me, Manuel, I've been doing 17 posts a week and I still don't have anybody and I've been doing this for 16 months. Well. Well, this is the reality of today's environment. You have to also pay to play. And those of us that have been around long enough, you know that the organic opportunity is not there anymore the way that it used to be. Now, that being said, powerhouse brands that are established right now, like my father, if you check out our organic content, we reach millions of people organically. But that's because we are already established and because we have a lot. So if you're not there, then you got to understand that at this point, you're going to have to invest some advertising dollars in getting your content. And hey, this is the Perpetual Traffic Podcast, right? So you guys are already educated a lot on the business manager world and how to use it. So at this point, you got to look at that superpower. You got to look at that obsessive communication about it. You got to look at that value that you're providing. And then you got to literally invest some advertising dollars in getting that content seen with a guaranteed Negative return on investment, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna make any money. And what's the purpose of that? Well, as we know, we wanna build audiences. So at this point, it depends on where you're at. If you have an audience already, you're gonna accumulate them, you're gonna build audiences of video watchers, of engaged fans, of uh, website visitors, of people that message your page, of your Instagram watchers, Instagram profile engagers, of th things that we're excited about, Instagram TV audiences, which right now you can now start creating, uh, and so on, right? So these are your audiences that you're building. So it depends on where you're at, this step right here. If you're starting off, you gotta have to put some money aside for advertising, knowing that you will not ever get it back with one purpose in mind, to build an audience so you can continue with the next step. Because without this being done, you got nobody to present your offers to. And that's one thing that you gotta figure out. If you, if you put some money to play, then you generate some audiences, you generate some video watchers, you do some testing, as you guys know, uh, we're experts in that world, you, you, you might know what your audience is, but in reality, you don't. Facebook will find it for you if you test it. So you might think like, I know my audience is like the 25 to 27, 27 year old and they are like in the 10% income range. And, but hey, in the end, the audience that you expected to get the least performance from is the one that over delivers and you never know. So you got to put some money to work so you can find out who your audience is. And that's this step right here is getting those audiences ready for the next step of your formula. I feel like I can talk till I'm blue in the face about the like ever, ever ongoing uh, 
like relationship between organic traffic and paid media and how correlated they are and how the number, the amount of money that you can spend on advertising is directly co correlated to the amount of organic, the number of organic sessions that you're going to see, not just on social media, but also on your website and building these audiences, you know, putting that money behind, you know, trying to start building these audiences and seeing who's really going to resonate with your product and who's resonating with your brand is not only just to start gaining, you know, gaining this organic traffic, but it's also just helping you build authority. And when you start to build authority, this is why it's so correlated, right? Because when you start to build that authority, then you start to get more or free traffic, more organic traffic, but you can't build authority until people, which is exactly what you were talking when we were at step three about providing value, people have to trust your brand, but they can't trust your brand if they've never heard of you before. So you have to go in and start doing the work by building the audiences. It all makes, I mean, hundred percent. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And then once you start creating those audiences or building those audiences, which does take time and mm -hmm. it's going to take probably some money too, but not too much. I mean, you know, you can do it on $5 a day on Facebook just to start or a dollar a day as Dennis, mm -hmm. you talks about all the time. Yeah. And then you can actually pull them into your world by building your lists, right? And that's step number five. Correct. At this point, you got to get creative. And, and this, this requires some architecture and some understanding of, of platforms. And it doesn't matter which ones. There are many, many tools out there. And in the world of marketing, you got to find a couple of them and master them. Uh, I, part, I am particularly very into the world of ManyChat. I have grown with them for years, I'm one of the top educators in their field, and I, 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 this is a platform that I have mastered with my team. I'm a big fan of it. I also use ClickFunnels. I also build websites, and I, you know, we do a lot of different things, but you got to find one that you can utilize, and, and why is it that you need this? Well, because how many influencers out there have a billion views, have so much attention, and they don't really know how to run a business. They're starving. They are struggling. I know many of them myself. Uh, they personally come to me saying, Manuel, I don't know how to pay my rent. And I'm like, well, wait a second. You got 1.5 million followers on Instagram. Are you kidding me? Well, they don't really know business. And this is where they get stuck. So at this mm -hmm. point is where marketing starts becoming that much more important. And you got to start mastering a platform. And these platforms have learning curves and you got to understand them. And they're not really complicated. I mean, uh, talking about a platform that I love, of course, ManyChat, back in the day, I mean, Ralph, you've been in business long enough. You couldn't move things around and program flows and architect sequences as simple as what we can do right now. I mean, right now you can build a funnel like that and you can build like a series of steps and Technology has gotten to a point in which it is so easy that really excuses should not be valid. You just have to stick with a, with a platform and just run with it and, and master it and get better at it. Just like LeBron James shot that basketball over and over and we learned how to ride a bike and so and so on. You got to just get a platform and master it. And why do you need to master a platform at this point? Well, because you need to generate leads because this is one of the major weak points of any business out there. The idea that just mastering social media is going to be enough to be able to scale to the moon. And I am guilty of that myself. Uh, I used to think that I was going to be able to direct response market the, the heck out of people and just get them to buy our stuff directly from Facebook, bring them into my shop and have them purchase all day long and get an infinite ROI, invest a dollar, get a thousand dollars back. And I was, I thought that I was absolutely superpower to be able to do that thing. And, and, and I was proven wrong. What has been proven right is the old marketing adage that the money's in the list. And not only that, the money is in what you do with that list. So at that point over here, you got to figure out once you have an audience, how do you bring them into your world? And there's, I can tell you very simply, uh, a few main ideas that I put together because this, is, this also goes in line at this point of, of, this, of the sequence. I don't sell anything yet. I still give them value. And I don't like to use the word freebie, but I really want to give them value of something that otherwise, I know should be sold. It's like real 
value. So for example, a course that you're going to give out. If you're a digital product, um, you're an educator yourself, uh, give out your best content for free. Uh, if you um, can do a quiz, quizzes are hot. Uh, a lead magnet in which you can give it a cheat sheet. For example, Dr. Berg, we did um, the keto cheat sheet. You can print it out and go with anybody grocery shopping and know exactly what to eat, when to eat it, what time, etc. Those are things that are simple things to create and anybody can create these things. I can tell you, for example, a hot tip for any of you guys, a platform that I've used that you want to know, okay, but I don't know how to create like something of value. Well, the PLR store, it starts as an um, acronym for private label um, rights. Uh, .com, the plrstore.com. You might've heard about this store. You go in there, you invest five twenty dollars you find a little booklet, you download it, uh, you brand it uh, with your own logo, you edit it to match the way that you talk and off you go. You got ideas to run with. So you can actually bring people in. So mini courses, quizzes, um, trainings, webinars, of course. Uh, for those of us that have been doing webinars for a long time, it's a big source of lead generation for us. We do provide a lot of value. Many of us give them out for free. Many of us sell them. Many of us give them out for free and sell something at the end. It doesn't matter. In the end, the, the product at the end is going to be different. But what you're trying to do is get more people into your central files because the more people you have, it's like the next level of relationship with people. Like you're taking them off social media and you're putting them in a place in which you control. And I'm a big fan of ManyChat for that. ManyChat makes it very simple. And again, I'm not uh, an owner in the company. I'm not an investor in the company. I wish I would have been. Uh, I'm already like, they already went through their angel rounds and things like that. I'm not into that world. But ManyChat is a very simple platform for you to create multi-channel conversations, generate email leads, phone numbers, subscribers on Messenger, and just bring them into your world so you can continue engaging with these people beyond social media. And at this point, you create your strategies to retarget these people that have been consuming your one through four. So now you can actually bring them into your central files and nurture like the old world um, used to say, nurture people, get them excited about your brand, about your business. That's what you do on messenger, on texting, on email, um, whatever you want to do. And that's a very important step of the formula. Cause if you drop that out, that's where most of the companies get in trouble. They, they don't put the importance of building lists that is going to help them just continue to generate revenue and bring in return customers. And this is the value journey worksheet from Ryan Dice in a lot of ways. I mean, it's I, you're describing. I it knew in a slightly it sounded familiar. <laughs> like, this is the, like this is the subscribe step. It is yeah. actually important. You gotta, you know, you can't propose marriage on the first date. Is you know what he yes. always says, which is, the... which is you know one that always sticks in my mind. But the point is, is like at a certain point, you have to actually give up some of your information, like just creating audiences, mm -hmm. website custom audiences. Uh, it, you know, engagement audiences on Facebook video ads, uh, engagement audiences on YouTube, subscribers on YouTube. At a certain point, you've got to pull them into your world and make them your own. And you can do that, obviously, with a tool like ManyChat or, you know, download the free worksheet, exchange my name and my email, because it's part of this sort of value journey worksheet, ultimately, to get to the conversion and, you know, then eventually sort of ascend them into other products or have them be brand advocates for you sort of at the end of the stage. Okay. So like the build the list stage is really is still important. I think every single customer of ours in our agency at some point in the conversion process, we are building a list. We are taking customer information. That is what, that is all part of it. So you can't jump from step one to step seven. You got to do all the steps in between. You can do it really fast you know, a couple of days, or it might take a few months. It sort of depends on what your product is. So after you build those lists, then what? What's step six? Yeah, so I'll tell you, a, I'm going to try to summarize it in two minutes, what I did uh, for my dad, which has mm -hmm. taken us into a whole new level during this COVID-19 environment. And what I did was that, okay, we already know that we figured out a superpower, right? But we took it next level on February um, when this whole thing started evolving on March, I talked to my dad and I said, dad, what is one thing that you consider to be really valuable to your organization right now? Well, mm -hmm. son, I got a $97 course. Okay, great. How much are you selling right now? Uh, well, I'm doing about uh, maybe $2,000 a week. Okay, that's, that's perfect. We're going to give it away for free. Are you ready? 
what, what are you talking about? It's $97 <laughs> course. Well, we're going to do it right now. Right now, this is an era not to monetize. This is an era to prioritize. Okay. Yes. So what you're going to do right now is we're going to focus on audience building and don't worry about monetizing. Not right now. Because if you go out there and you try to sell in the middle of this whole pandemonium and panic and situation, it's going to end up probably hurting your brand. Like right now, business is going on. But I can tell you right now at that moment, that's not something that people were comfortable with, offers and services and things like that. So what we did was, it probably one of the greatest marketing strategies that I've, I've ever put together. I think it's at the top of the list. Uh, I'm going to give myself a pat in the back, all right? And at that point, I said, Dad, we're going to give it away for free. But the way that we're going to do it is we're going to do it in a very oriented marketing structure. We're going to do a marketing strategy here. And that's why step number six is like get deep into the marketing world. You got to become an expert because marketing changes so fast. You got to keep on evolving. You got to keep on adjusting yourself and finding what's the opportunity and what works well and what doesn't work anymore and adjust as much as possible. Well, what I did was that I created what I called a COVID-19 humanitarian campaign. Now, Mm -hmm. This is something that right now you can still create, which is a humanitarian offer, which is basically something that you generally will give away uh, for exchange of money or a service that you would sell, but now you're giving it away for free. Why? Because together we are better. That's the marketing message. Together we can get through this during these difficult times. So what I did was that I created a contest. And there's many things that you can do. The contest was built inside ManyChat and it's very technical. We would have to have a completely separate podcast just for the structure of the mm -hmm. contest. Um, but on, on that contest, we brought people into it. Obviously, we already have an audience, so we leveraged that. We invited people to participate into the humanitarian campaign. And we said, look, we're going to give away our best course. It's $97. And we're going to give it to you for free. No pitches, no offers, no upsells, nothing. That's a promise. Why are we doing this? because we believe that we can make the world a better place if we all unite. And we want you to participate and we want you to help me. Help me help other people, help me spread the word. So my dad, what he did was that we started creating content and doing Facebook lives and YouTube lives and doing a lot of like social media content, being super omnipresent. And we put three requirements on the contest. The requirement number one, you have to be willing to share and spread the word. So they would come into ManyChat, Again, you can use any platform that you like, uh, and they would actually get information about the contest. They will get free access to the $97 program, and then we will make people, we will give them a, a unique link because it's gonna be a link that is gonna show how they're participating, and then we'll give them instructions on how to spread the word. That by itself, make the whole thing go viral. We also said, you gotta be willing to provide a testimonial video at the end if you're happy with it, only if you're happy but I just want your willingness. And number three, you got to stay active. Why do we do the, you got to stay active? Because I've learned for all the years that people don't appreciate free things as much. So in order for me to give them something that is really valuable, $97 for free, and still get them to engage and participate, I knew I had to create some conditions and some requirements to make them feel like, okay, I don't have to open up my wallets I don't have to give them my credit cards, but I do have to give them my energy. I have to grab that link and share it on social media. I have to grab my camera and record a video. I have to stay on the course and move on it. Otherwise, I'm going to lose access. So we made them have requirements. And by doing that, to give you an example, Natural Selling was a big deal. It was already like a big brand. It has been growing for years. But we had a product, which was a digital product called Unimetab, which is my dad's education, which was okay. Like I said, it was doing $2,000 a week, um, $100 per course. Uh, it wasn't really a big deal. What, did it, it, what it did to this particular product was so incredible. For example, we had 8,000 people on our list for this university in a matter of six weeks. We started March 1st. We ended middle of April, we had 220,000 people on the list. Wow. So from 8,000, 220,000 people on the list. Revenue from 8,000 to $200,000 in revenue on the month after the whole contest was over. Mm -hmm. Simple, it was a marketing strategy. One of the main things that I learned from my dad, Ralph and Amanda, was that any war in, 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 in this world has not been won with individual battles. It's been won with a strategy. Mm -hmm. 
If you got the right strategy in place, you're going to be able to take over the world. So for about six weeks, we, we ate rice and beans. We took deep breaths. We, hold, we held on tight and we just promoted our humanitarian campaign over and over, nonstop. And we went crazy viral on social media. Our YouTube channel exploded. Instead of doing 80,000 subscribers uh, a month on my dad's YouTube channel, we were getting 300,000 subscribers every month. The whole thing went crazy. So the revenue exploded. So this was a next level marketing strategy. So you have to all understand that marketing can get really deep. And all you got to do is figure out one strategy get it implemented. And by doing that, you're going to be able to get results. If it doesn't work, you move on to the next one. And that's why this mm. step is so important. And I think, you know, I think this even drives home, you know, becoming a marketing expert. Obviously this was a very strategic and planned out campaign, but the thing is what it also really drives home is that, you know, uh, you built the list, you spent an entire month, like you said, you ate rice and beans and you spent an entire month just really hammering in that you're giving away this product for free. And then the following month after you built the list and started building that audience, you had, you know, the biggest month to date. And I think what's so, I mean, this is obviously a predictable system. Like we did something very similar at Digital Marketer where we said, okay, we're going to take a step back. There was a point, you know, in March and April where it wasn't the right move to be trying to sell services. And the thing is that some brands were, and if you weren't an expert in your industry, you wouldn't really know that, okay, this is not the right environment where I need to be pushing, you know, for example, a $97 product or our, you know, lab trial is generally a very similar price. Um, I saw that offer, by the way, I saw (laughs) it. I was a part of that. And we, we took a step back and we were like, okay, we're going to give away. We did a very similar, a very similar campaign where we said, okay, we're going to give away lab for free. And the same thing happened. We had the biggest month of leads. And then the following month we had one of our biggest revenue months and it's, about building that list and building the trust. And I think, I mean, you could go, I mean, I could go back through every step and say what, how it's relevant, you know, each step is relevant to this, you know, but in order to be able to, you know, start to generate that revenue and start to bring in the money you have to have, you have to have people who have trust in your brand and they're not going to have trust in your brand if you're trying to push something where everyone's in a crisis, right? So it's having that knowledge and being that expert to know when to pull back and expand the audience and know when to push. Because sometimes, you know, maybe during Black Friday is when you, right? You know when to push push the revenue and know when to push, you know, more lead generation, I think. Right. (laughs) <laughs> right. Opportunity. I think it was an absolute opportunity for, for us to have a correct strategy in place. And it, it is, it works out. And, you know, the ones that actually did it correctly, uh, they end up looking like superheroes. Again, we're talking about Absolutely. superpowers, right? You end up looking like you really cared about people in the world during these difficult times. Instead of just trying to monetize, you really provided value. And there's nothing like that public perception because when the time comes and you make offers, the feeling that you get back is such a different feeling because people like, they feel like you deserve. It's like almost like I to tell people, you earn a right to make offers. That's yes. what you do. And, yes. and that connects us to the final, that, that is actually something that leads into the last step because mm-hmm. you're trying to get to a point in which you feel comfortable enough as a brand that you know that you have earned that spot to ask for something now from these people. I, uh, yeah, and I can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Darren, we're all looking at each other trying to talk at this <laughs> Which leads us into, I'm the guy who keeps things going. Uh, That's right. Which leads us, sorry about that, Darren, if you could just edit that out. Uh, Which leads us into step seven. So finally, we're going to make some money here. But let's let's keep in mind, your strategy was not... was not contrived. It was like when DM did what they did, and I don't know who made that decision to give away mm-hmm. such a tremendous amount of value. 
yeah, it was a smart marketing play, but it was also the right thing to do. Yeah. Sometimes the right thing to do, guys, is to actually sell your products on the back end of some pretty nice goodwill because it's the logical next step for them and never apologize to selling to your market. And that's a mm -hmm. challenge I know a lot of blog owners have, a lot of people that are in social media like, oh, I can't sell to my list. Like, yeah, you owe it to them to sell to them, especially if you have a product that you know is the logical next step in the relationship. You know, you've gone through all the right steps. You're not skipping any steps here. You need to convert them because when they do convert and pay you money, they're going to get even more value. Mm -hmm. And that's and I, step seven. I think you bring up such a good point too, where it's, you know, I, and meanwhile, I think you can say the same thing where it's, you're not anticipating the biggest revenue month uh, that you've ever generated. And that was the same with DM where, nope, we were sure as heck didn't anticipate that we were going to drive revenue by opening up a product for free. But we also knew that we also weren't going to drive revenue anyway because right. the world well was it. in such a scary place. So it was like, might as well do it. <laughs> might as well. Yeah. Might what as well do lose? a goodwill campaign because why not help people when no one's buying anything anyway, because we're all scared. Everyone's scared. Everyone had the same feelings and same uncertainty. So since you know, you can foresee what is happening as an expert in the industry, you know, no one's anticipating making revenue off of it, but because you earned, and I love that you guys said that is because you earn the right to market because you earn the trust and you know, the right point to take a step back and, you know, give something away of value. Then you earn, earn back the opportunity to sell to your audience. And I think that's such an important, such an important step. Totally. I'll just add something just to finalize that subject right there. It's not a March 2020 strategy, exclusive strategy. This yeah. works mm -hmm. right now. Like mm -hmm. obviously we don't have maybe the excessive hy hy hysteria that we had when this mm -hmm. whole thing started going super viral, but there's still so much uncertainty we don't know what's going to happen yet. I mean, the numbers are still there. The, the governments are still battling. We have a uh, government possible like collapse. And mm -hmm. is Trump going to get elected? Is this guy going to get elected? I mean, mm -hmm. this is not a politics uh, by no means show, but we are full of uncertainty right now in regards to present and future. And with uncertainty, the consumers uh, also, um, they themselves, they, they hold themselves back. So this is still a good opportunity to be like, hey, just so you guys know, and one thing that I'll tell you guys, which is quite, quite obvious, the market is not being rational right now. Uh, <laughs> the stock market is at the highest levels, almost. Like it went down to, I, I don't know, um, in March or uh, I don't know if it was April, but it went all the way down to the low and the Dow Jones 16,000 or whatever. And then it climbed back up. And when you ask, you ask anybody, why are we at the highest levels in the middle of a recession? Are you <laughs> kidding me? When you look at retail, I don't know if you guys have been following, um, but I, I'm, I'm very interested in this, in this whole evolution of, um, and the, this, this change from retail traditional to our world. Uh, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm excited about it because some of these things are sad, but it's, it's so like fast that it's happening like this, that it, it's shocking that you see an economy that pretends to have things looking great. Like stock market is like nothing has ever happened. We're at, at breaking records. Uh, we have trillion dollar companies and so on. GNC, Close, Payless, Jim Barry, Charming Charlie, Papyrus, JC Penny, 118 year old company, going bankrupt. Uh, Aldo, which is a shoe company, Neiman Marcus, closing 16 stores, J. Crew, True Religion, Pier One Imports. I mean, Chuck E. Cheese is going bankrupt. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right? So we have all these massive shifts, but still, the start, you know what I mean? So you got to still be prepared. There's still uncertainties. And this is such a good time for you to be prepared with a good, solid marketing strategy. And for me, it is exciting. I'm sure for Ralph, for a digital marketer, for you guys, it's exciting because we happen to be really certain 
of the world because we're really good at this whole internet thing and we understand it in and out and we're always evolving and learning it, but we are better positioned than most people out there to survive, even though there's a lot of people out there that are not gonna make it unless they pivot and they adjust themselves. And this is a good sequence of, for anybody to implement, whether you have started already or not, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. It's uh, it, there is a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. out there, and I think even when this thing started, you know, we talked about it a lot here, and I know Ryan talked about it a lot. Like, you mm -hmm. can't stop marketing. You can't just sort of give up and give in, and especially if you're digitally based, you're in a unique position because we are going to get out of it eventually. Mm -hmm. And you know, whether or not the money <laughs> money dries up is sort of the question, obviously, here in the U.S. And to what effect <laughs> the 2020 yeah. elections will have on that. Like, we really don't know, but you can control all these seven steps here. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, like, you're going to, if you start doing this now, you're going to create an incredible foundation for six months from now. This is not like a, you're going to see value if you're starting today within a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to want to probably give up in the first couple of months. It's a process. Because you're not getting the feedback and nobody's listening yep. to you yet, but you just got to keep driving, keep working it. You know, and I think anything, you know, worth having is worth working at. And this is absolutely it. And if you're interested in growing a business, these seven steps are a tremendous way of doing it. You did it obviously for you know your brand and your father and do it all the time with customers in the agency, correct? Mm -hmm. I do. It's, not, it's something that we implement. I, I, I actually make it mandatory for my account managers to figure out this particular formula, this sequence for any particular client because everybody can figure out. And I know no matter who you are, you absolutely can find out all these steps that lead into what the reason why we're all in business, which is being able to monetize, generate income, and help people along the way with our products and services, mm -hmm. and make an exchange with valuable products. That's the final step. You make offers to these people that are coming through these sequence one to six. And when you make these offers, they are gonna believe in you and they're gonna buy things from you. And like Ralph said, it doesn't happen in the first couple of weeks. Guaranteed it's not gonna happen. I don't know, maybe you're like Justin Bieber and you're gonna be able to go viral fast. If you <laughs> If you're not a Justin Bieber or one of these very special people and in, in unicorns in the universe, uh, well, you're gonna go for a roadmap that we've all traveled, that's for sure. And, um, and you, gotta, you gotta just be willing to go for that process and you all can make it. And then you create those audiences and sell to people and that snowballs and that's how you do business in this environment. Absolutely. Well, this has been tremendous, man. I'm so happy that you came on today's show. Uh, if they wanted to find out more about you and what you guys do over at your agency, where would, where would folks go? Uh, Ralph, well, my agency is AGM Agency. Like you said, it stands for Attention Grabbing Media, uh, agmagency.com on social media. I walk the talk. Um, so I'm the first one to tell you that I don't present offers to people along the way. I just basically educate all day long as much as possible, hundreds of publications a week. And you can find me on Facebook, um, uh, Manuel Suarez. You can find me on, on Instagram, Mr. Manuel Suarez, Mr. Manuel Suarez on LinkedIn, Mr. Manuel Suarez uh, on YouTube, Manuel Suarez. And you find me there. That's, I'm fortunate enough to not have um, such a, uh, uh, it's not a, such a common name. So if you search Manuel Suarez, chances are, even if you Google it, I'm going to be one of the first ones to show up. <laughs> yeah. Easy to find because you, uh, you're obsessively communicating about these stuff. Too, That's right. So. I walk the talk. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, this has been tremendous. Really, uh, really appreciate you coming on this week's show and uh, being a sponsor of Perpetual Traffic for this month, which is awesome. And uh, definitely check out everything that he does, Manuel does over at Attention Grabbing Media. And we will leave all the links and all the resources that we talked about on today's show. There are quite a few of them in our show notes. So head on over to digitalmarketer.com forward slash podcast. This has been episode 269. Manuel Suarez, thanks for coming on PT and bringing it today. Awesome. It's been a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Great. Till next week, everyone, see ya.